Welcome back to the sixth installment of the Nerd Cave Podcast. I am your co-host, the Nerdy Knight, here with my other co-host, that one Skyhead, and tonight's guest speaker is Speed Robo. Speed, hey. please introduce yourself. Uh, name's Speed Robo. I do a YouTube channel about card games, focusing on card fight and buddy fight, and I'm planning on expanding into Hearthstone pretty soon. All right. It's like, all right, Scott Kid, what was our first topic for tonight? Well, our first topic for tonight is, well, apparently Seth Rollins has been banned from a another music festival, which <laughs> he had a funny tweet saying, why does this keep happening? And as you can see on the, uh, on the, uh, what was it, the Farm Broad Country Music Festival, there is a prohibition sign, prohibited sign, and on the second row, on the second row, and the third one, it's WWE superstar Seth Rollins. This is not the first time this has happened. It's happened other times, but it, it's just a little funny thing that just because <laughs> it, no one knows why these music festivals are banning Seth Rollins. <laughs> It's just really stupid, but really funny. I I don't know. It probably has to be an inside joke. Yeah, at this point, <laughs> it's it's to me it's it, it seems like it's 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 a meme. Yeah, it, it's a meme. Yeah, and speaking of wrestling, as you if you were following uh, wrestling in a few years past, you will probably remember the name CM Punk. A wrestler from Chicago who started off in little small promotions before making it really big in ROH and then transforming from ROH to WWE to then become one of the biggest their biggest draws in mints of heels with such with such great stable groups as the Straight Edge Society to the new form Exus Nexus to when he actually did his famous pipe bomb where he dropped where he was given a microphone and for ten minutes was allowed to say whatever he wanted, and he tore in to Vince McMahon and the company. Nice. Which, was, which is still considered to be some of the best mic work that's happened in the PG era. And he is going to be fighting a guy by the name of Mike Gale in UFC 200, uh, 203 in September. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's actually really cool. Yeah. I think that's badass. It's gonna be a really fun thing that they're gonna be that it's gonna be a fun thing to see him go from wrestling to UFC and we all know the whole jokes. He's never gonna wrestle in UFC he's never gonna actually fight in UFC because of his it kept getting pushed back and pushed back, especially with the back surgery and other right. stuff. But it, it looks like this is actually happening. And speaking of which of UFC, uh, Conor McGregor actually called out the entire wrestling roster by saying that, um, shit, where is it? Hold up, I actually need to go on the Twitter. Marsh, you're gonna edit this part out, right? Maybe. Yeah. Fuck you guys. <laughs> well, I thought this was live. No, it's not. No, 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 it's not. Oh. It's pre recorded. Oh, well. Guess I don't have to be on my best behavior then. All right, cool. Not All like right. not really. Yeah, <laughs> we don't have a large enough following yet to do these things live. Yeah, yeah. Conor McGregor no, made I'm a tweet. To, I have done live streams in the past. So that's what I thought. Was. Uh, Conor McGregor uh, made a tweet saying, "I don't mean no disrespect to the WWE fans. What I meant to say was, I'll slap the head off the entire roster and twice on Sunday, which caught wow. the ire of a lot of of a lot of wrestlers and a lot of wrestling fans." Yeah. Uh, yeah. So actually, um, Dana Brooke, who's a diva, actually said, "Hmm, you really think this is going to make you stand out or something?" Wrong move, buddy. Our WWE fans are behind us, which is like really true because a lot of not only were the fans tweeting at at him, but also prominent uh, wrestlers were too, such as Roman Reigns saying, "You're the size of my leg. Shut up." And there's this. There's this great image of Brock Lesnar standing next to Conor McGregor, and it and it just it's just really funny. 
Well, if his goal was to stand out, he succeeded. Right? Because people are talking about him. Well, well, Conor McGregor is one of the most top uh, draws for the UFC ever, and he's also considered to be one of the best. Right. So I, I, I think he was just – I think this is just Conor McGregor taking the piss out of WWE fans, which like I'm like – I'm okay with. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Here's the image of Brock Lesnar standing next to Conor McGregor. <laughs> dude's going dude, like, dude, dude, like, dude's gonna get wrecked. But Conor McGregor is an actual fantastic fighter. But, and that's... but, but look, you do you do realize why there's weight divisions, right? <laughs> yes, I, I know, but yeah. it's still it's still well. Yet again, Brock Lesnar. You know, might possibly have been actually juicing during the UFC UFC 200. Like, who doesn't juice? They actually regularly test for that, like yeah. crazy. It's actually it, it's a little it's a little funny because like Roman Reigns said, "You're the size of my leg." There was also Rusev. Speaking, speaking of CM Punk, when is like when is the fight between him and JDF gonna happen? Never. Uh, as soon as uh, CM Punk actually enters. But didn't he say he had no interest in actually fighting him? Well, the official statement was like a while back. He said he had no interest in fighting a Power Ranger. I don't see why not. Like, like who cares, right? My, who, like, no, we just want to see, like, you know, JDF whip ass one more time. <laughs> okay, I spell Rusev. Rusev, I have no fucking idea. Yeah, but a lot of wrestlers were just kind of tweeting at Conor McGregor, and it was just kind of funny. Okay, uh, oh, switch, okay, uh, what, what's our next story now? I kind of forgot. Um, I... Well, Either Pokemon or Suicide Squad. Uh, uh, oh, okay, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, so, okay, so I'm gonna... Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right, Killing Joke, Suicide Squad, and Ghostbusters. Okay. And that's enough about Conor McGregor. Uh, let's actually move on to our next story, which is... Like, I actually watched The Killing Joke all 77 minutes of it. Mm. Yeah. Like, How was it? Um, it was okay. I, It was okay. I could sort of see what they were doing the first half. Like, they were sort of, like, trying to give, like, Batgirl, like, these, like, father figure issues because the whole, like, you know whole bat sex thing and you don't even see anything and I'm like people are getting upset over this I mean if you think about the killing joke isn't even canon anymore so why are people getting butthurt over this yeah I see your point but I now I haven't seen it but I've heard about it and I don't know I feel like there were better ways that they could have uh, done something different with the Batgirl character other than she had sex with Batman. It's like, whatever. It wasn't very interesting. To play. No. Like, no, but, um, the, no, but, no, but, um, the, um, personal reasons, like, no, why she did it. Yeah. Like, you know, it was implied that, like, you know, she was starting to get, like, attached to Batman. I'm like, okay, I like where this is going. But then, like, you know, it just sort of came to, like, a screeching halt towards, like, the halfway point, and then it went to, like, you know, the killing joke portion. I'm like... It, it was like we were watching two completely unrelated short films. Right. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, if they, hit, like, spit, like, if they put, add on, like, 10, 15, even 20 more minutes, like, smooth things out, it probably would have been, like, you know, one of, like, the best, like, you know, Batman movies ever made. Hmm. But then again, nothing will ever beat Mask of the Phantasm, and I just pissed off a lot of Nolan fanboys right there. Yeah. Speaking I like of, the yeah, yeah, I, I do too. I like Christopher Nolan's uh, work. But speaking as speaking of Batman and Batman Center Universe, I actually recently saw Suicide Squad as of Same like here. a few days ago. It's like I'm gonna yeah. see Suicide Squad sometime later this week. Yeah. So, uh, my take on Suicide Squad was, I'd give it like a 6.5 out of 10. It was fun, but definitely not a movie to purchase. This is a rental, or if you absolutely want to go see it in the theaters, 
go see it. But this isn't the sort of movie I'd see more than once. It was fun, but not very good. Exactly. I thought the same thing as well. Uh, to me, it just kind of seemed like they were just... It, it seemed like a, a jumble mess. Yeah. Well, I was like, well, I heard there were, like, reshoots because um, they were trying to make it, like, you know, more fun because of the uh, Bohemian Rhapsody trailer they released, like, a couple months ago. Yeah. And that, and, like, I heard, like, they cut out, like, a lot of Jared Leto's parts, which may have had crucial plot information. Or, like, you know, may have, like, you know, sort of, like, brought things together better. Right. Well, here's the deal. It goes back to DC's whole mindset. They're so worried about following up Marvel Senpai, they can't focus on making a halfway decent movie. That and isn't he's... Batman. Yeah, yeah, that isn't Batman, which is kind of really sad. Exactly. Or, or wa- well, then again, Watchmen was pretty decent. Yeah, but that was those were before DC decided, hey, let's do what Marvel's doing. Yeah. And the thing is, they can't. They aren't comfortable just following in Marvel's shoes, where they could set up a bunch of solid solo movies, and then go into the crossover shit. Or, they can completely forget what Marvel's doing, and do crossover movies, but cut out the backstory and assume their viewers already know the comic books. But what they're doing is they're half-assing both, and trying to do both, and it's not working. Hmm. Yeah, I see what you're going for, because Marvel has, like, what? They've been doing this since, like, what, 2006? They have, like, a 10-year head start on DC exactly. at this point. Yep. Jesus Christ, we've been doing this for 10 years. I know. I'm kind of sick of it. I, I just want to end. After Infinity War, I just want them to stop. Yeah, Marvel's honestly burnt me out on superhero movies at this point. They've oversaturated, uh, oversaturated the market and keep throwing more crap in my face, and I have to watch everything if I want to keep up, because every single movie connects to the previous 20 movies, the, and if I it, miss one, I'm missing out on the entire experience, so I may as well not even yeah, bother. Th- that feel when you're more excited over a re- about a remake of a remake, Magnificent Seven, than you are the latest installment of a Marvel movie. Oh, shit, can we talk about Magnificent Seven? Because that looks great. Uh, like, uh, uh, yeah, sure, sure, we can talk about Magnificent Seven, but I actually got some things I want to say about that. Uh, okay. Here's the thing about Marvel. Even Marvel's starting to stress me out with with its stuff because, yes, sure, they do. Usually, the stuff they do is like a a grand slam. It's a fucking you know they knocked it right out of the park. But even now, to, the, to it's gotten to the point where I'm just like, okay, I really don't care what superhero best friends are doing on this off to the side, like with Agents of Shield. And right now, Cage, uh, the actual new up- upcoming, where they're doing with Luke Cage. Is that was that who that is or? Oh uh, yeah, it's Luke Cage. That's Luke Cage. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. I just want to make sure. It looks good. I'm gonna watch it, but I'm just at the point where I'm just like, if I miss it and I don't end up not watching it, it's fine. Whatever. No, I prefer more self-contained, like contained stuff, like Daredevil. But then they announce, oh yeah, we're gonna be implementing that in the MCU. I'm like, uh-huh. I give up, because the Netflix Daredevil was fucking beautiful. I'm. I am super hyped for season three. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. Daredevil was pretty good. I hated Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., though. Yeah, I didn't I like hated. it either. I was like, I hated it, I, in the beginning. it got boring after a while. Yeah. I didn't My watch God, it. God, that main character was such an annoying bitch. Sky, yeah, I know you're talking about. Oh. Hated it. Okay. Yeah. Well, moving on. Hey, let's talk about Maria Joyce. I nope. thought we were going to talk about Ghostbusters. Do you really nah, want to talk about Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters. It was yeah. a cash grab. Moving on. Yeah, yeah, basically. Oh, yeah, okay. there you go. Talk about Ghostbusters. Yeah, we did it. All right. Okay, I, I actually saw Ghost, Ghostbusters. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Well, that's good. It, I, I came in expecting this thing to be a gigantic pile of cringe escarpment of cringe of just solid concentrated shit it like, but to, no. the point, to the point where it's like it's magnificent low cow garbage that Rob Fig decided to just present to the feminist gods and them towering over them with their big old guts and their you know fucking 
proper pronouns. It was it was made as it was made as an offering to Saint Anita. <laughs> all praise her name. Not even just Saint Anita. It's just the fact that this this thing happened, and it was just I expected it to be terrible, and it yeah. was only okay. That feel, that moment when you said that moment where you set your stand, you set your expectation so low, you were actually impressed. Yeah, I was like, "Huh." Now, I don't. Remake was a stupid idea. Period. I don't care if the cast is male or female; it's not gonna work. Ghostbusters was a, a once in a lifetime miracle, like Terminator yeah. Two. Why, why yeah. would you? Why would you make a sequel? You can't do it again. It, it was just a bad idea, period. That is that is painful. Because I watched the Angry Joe it, like review and in before her der Angry Joe der, like he actually said that like you know there's only like one character in that game that is like actually useful and to the point where he's broken and it's just a repetitive unplayable mess. I think my favorite thing was I watched Angry Joe's review of Ghostbusters and he just tore that movie apart. Yeah, it's like it sucks. It's not funny. Uh, that's the main reason why I was thinking this movie might be terrible and I have to go see it was because of Angry Joe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then I'm just like, eh, it's not that bad. And then it's really funny because how he brought it up was like he actually brought like the the old ghost trap. It's like a, a certified stinker. Oh, God. <laughs> I like, love oh, Joe. That feel when you, so you get a notification, some follows you on Twitter. Either it like Either it's a catfish account or they have more followers than you, and they're just shilling. Mm -hmm, yeah. Oh, no, I, I have a lot of porn people who follow me. Like, a lot of cam girls, which I'm like, I'm okay with this. What the f- <laughs> I'm, no, it's like, I'm okay with this. It's like, no, I just want regular people to follow me. I don't want, like, I get like, ooh, a new follower and catfish. This reeks of catfish. So much cat- so much catfish that there's literally cats trying to get into my house because they smell the catfish. Okay, I, 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 I only have this. one follower, and it's you. <laughs> I, uh, all right, moving on. Moving on to this, uh, the craziness. Maria Joyce has been making the headlines as of just you know weeks ago, and generally I wouldn't talk about this person. I wouldn't even like touch this person with a ten foot pole. But her post on the seventh about her wanting to be a goddess of love and her shrine oh, and what? wanting to build it in Peru, which I'm just like, no, like I, I want to take a step back and just be like, whoa, whoa, let's, let's calm down here for a second, lady. Like, let's talk this out. Like, what the fuck are you going on about? Yeah. Just long as, long as posts she made about wanting to build a temple in Peru and trying to get people to be more spiritually, you know, enlightened or, or some bullshit like that. I'm just here like, what the, this person has just gone off the deep end. It's gone so bad that I honestly kind of hope that someone in her friends or maybe her, her parents, somebody, you know, sit her down or get her into like the actual mental health she needs. Cause it's like, what the, yeah, she's what, 16? I have no idea how well, old she is. I think she's like in her like late teens, early twenties. Wow. And she lives all the way in Brit Bongistan. But what do you guys think of this crazy person? Um, 
Yeah, crazy people are gonna be crazy. Either like no, either this is like a troll because she, like either she's trolling everyone hard, or this is legitimate. Yeah. This this lady is just off her rocker, and I'm just I'm amazed at just how just creepy this shit is. I'm just oh. Yeah, it's totally creepy. It's it's a little ridiculous. But here's the thing. If you don't pay attention to the crazy person, you don't acknowledge them, eventually they go away. But this is the internet. We have to be reminded about what someone said eight years ago. <coughs> it came start anyway. Oh my god. Yay, internet. Yeah, hooray for the internet. Like, I'm on live stream with my fucking hands up. <laughs> uh. Uh, any anything else about Marina Joyce? No, she's just a she's just a person who I think seriously needs some help. Yeah. And I hope you I hope she sees it. I hope I hope she actually does get the help that she needs cuz it's uh, It our, must be like some sort of like mental anguish or something. All right, all right, all right. Um, all right. So before we get into the um, meat and potatoes of today's podcast, uh, let's go on to our favorite segment, cosplayer of the day. Yay! Yay! Today, like today's featured, like today's featured cosplayer is Kitsune Kid. I've been following her for years, and I just remembered I was following her today. <laughs> Not a great endorsement there. No, no, because literally five minutes before we start getting recording, like Sky Kid was like, "Hey, you have like, hey, do you have the cosplayer today?" I was like, "Shit, <laughs> let me look." <laughs> like okay, but, but yeah, okay. but yeah, um, Jay, you look through some of her stuff. What do you think? Uh, I think that this person makes a fairly well. Wait a second, did I close out of her? Yep, I closed out of her thing. God damn! <laughs> God damn it! I Jay. liked her um, Street Fighter costume. Oh, the Sea Viper one. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. Like, yeah, that's what got me to follow her in the first. Like, oh shit, that's a good Sea Viper. Not yeah. tan enough, but really damn good. Well, yeah. No, it, yeah, like um. That was really well put together. Yeah. Oh, she also did Tifa, but we all know Kai Tusha Moonfox's Tifa is the best Tifa on the entire internet. Okay, um, okay. First of all, Moon, Moon Fox herself is just damn. Some, yeah, yeah, that makes that, me that, weak to my knees. It's like the like no, that's just, that's just comparing apples to oranges. Like no, that's like comparing like a pop like a little cap gun to a nuclear ICBM. <laughs> it's just not fair. Yeah, you're not wrong in that part, but but yeah, no, she she she's a really good cosplay. I can honestly see why you like her. Yeah. And okay, I have actually haven't read the article yet. <laughs> which which article? The Pokemon Go one. I'm actually kind of skimming through it right now. Oh, okay. Like, okay. But you guys were talking so loud, it kept distracting me. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Right. I can talk not as loud if you want. Oh no, that's uh, let's take uh how about we all take this time to actually read this article and just give out our opinions of it. That right, sounds good. There you go. A few moments later. And moving on to our next uh news, we're gonna be talking about Pokemon Go, the new update that they have with the new tracking system, as well as something else where we're gonna kinda mention at the end of it, but you know what? We'll save that bit for last. So <laughs> here we have an article by Forbes. Talking about the brand new tracking system, and uh, well, who wants to go first? Uh, uh, I'll go first. All right. So, Niantic's been fucking up left, right, and center with Pokemon Go recently. The three-step glitch, followed by removing a PokeVision, which was the only way to still reliably track Pokemon, and the removing of the tracking system altogether. So, what they've done is they brought back a sort of baby version of the tracking system, which helps a little bit. But this by no means fixes the issues. Pokemon Go is still an unfinished game in my opinion, and this update, while helpful, doesn't really make 
give me a whole lot of faith for the company down the road, and the company still has a problem without with not communicating what they're doing. They still aren't communicating. So, this is good, but they're going to have to do a lot more to win back life for us. I'm having fun with Pokemon Go, and I'm kind of annoyed that I didn't take advantage of the three-step glitch uh, thing, especially with all the websites that kept just posting those. But I understand where, what's the company called again, Nick? Niantic. Niantic, where Niantic made the post about how, okay, this is cheating, let's make it that's actually making it so it's harder to cheat and stuff, which I can understand. But, you know, people yeah. are going to exploit glitches anyway. Yeah, exactly. But is it really cheating when your game doesn't work, and this is the only way to make it work? I don't think so. Because the tracking system was broken, and the tracking system was the only part of the game that really mattered. The game's whole point is hunting down and catching Pokemon. If you can't hunt and track the Pokemon, what's the point? Yeah. So, am I glad that some version of the tracking system's back? Yes. But they're gonna have to bring back the three-step thing, which was dead on balls perfect. They're, they've gotta bring it back. Otherwise, I'm just not happy. Uh, I, I think, uh, I think that bro that uh wait sleep bot right uh speed robo all right speed robo is actually right on this aspect yeah i'm still gonna play pokemon go because it's fun and it's giving me excuse to try and run to the gym and not be fat and ugly <laughs> well well the fat well the fat part you can work on the ugly part not so much uh i'm, I'm fairly oh. certain that the beard makes me more uh approachable than you marshall yeah no, the respect beard. the beard. No, I will not respect the beard. I've been thinking about growing out a creepy pedo stash. Do it. Do it. Uh, speaking of creepy pedo, pedo maz, Brazzers has done something very interesting. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, you get the idea. The yeah. basic... Jumping on the bandwagon on the popularity of Pokemon Go, Brazzers decided to release a video called Porn Star Go. <laughs> we will post the Safe for Work trailer in the description. If you want to go see the Red Band version, which is infinitely better and funnier, just go to Pornhub and type in Pokemon Go. Uh. Which, oh man, that is... No, like no, like I think we need to bring um, speed up to speed on this. Yeah. About no, the red. I, I've not heard of this. About the red band trailer. You have not heard of the Pokemon Triple XX parody. Nope. Well, it stars a man by the name of Aguero El Nico Pola, which is. We we don't give a fuck about the dudes. We just care about the chicks getting fucked. We all know that. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, but the it stars him as, you know, as Red or as a Pokemon Go trainer. Yeah. Just like as a Pokeball. And then it has You know uh, what? Let's not spoil it. It has I'm gonna go watch it. No and oh, then oh. The viewers can go watch it. No, it's like no no, we have to talk about the trailer. <laughs> Oh, all right, no, all right. No, no, we have to talk about it <laughs> because, okay. th like, because this, you know, because this is what the internet was made for. Yeah. Well, obviously, when the trailer begins, it just begins with the uh, with the uh, with Jordy coming out, just like like as red, and pulls out anal bleeds. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, this neighbor looks at him and goes, "What the fuck?" On the red band version. <laughs> There he is, just standing there with his dick out. And his neighbor just looking at him and going like, what the fuck? Yeah, and uh, he's walking, he's walking, he finds Ella Hugs dressed as a sexy Charizard because reasons, and then he finds a sexy, another... va a sexy Vaporeon. Yeah, but the Vaporeon is being played by Patty... Mechova. And then finally they stumble upon a Pikachu who's uh 
just who is uh, Alexis Thomas. Yeah. And it's just like one gigantic orgy. <laughs> it's it's honestly great. The fact that you haven't seen it makes me surprised because as soon as this hit the wall, I I shared the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like and it dropped yesterday wow well look for my starting review of the coming soon it's like coming soon to the nerdy night nerdy night cinema the pokemon go porn parody is it worth it <laughs> is it worth it <laughs> Is it worth it? Dude, of course it's going to be worth it. Just for the Pikachu girl. Because damn she fine. Oh, it's behind a paywall. The, the, uh, pay, pay, it's like paywall. Pleb, please. You gotta torrent that shit. Wait, people pay for things? People pay for porn? Yeah, uh, to get, like, uh, get, get this stuff, you... They like, do pay for it. They got. They need that 1080p, 60 frames per second, so they can see, <laughs> so they can see the look of regret of all their life choices. <laughs> and that beautiful, crisp detail. And I think with that notion, <laughs> we're just gonna go ahead and just end today's. Sorry if it was a little bit late, but or a little short. Normally, this thing runs for an hour, but there really wasn't much to talk about. We just want to talk about some interesting stuff that interests us, and why not give us feedback on what you guys want or what you just want to hear? It's like, yeah, be sure to follow, like, be sure to follow us on Twitter for updates and want to know when the next episode's going to drop. All as well fun, as all as well as you. as well as the Nerdy Knights here, other stuff he posts. Like, 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 yeah, it's kind of bullshit. I mean, I make a video about Star Wars, about Star Wars manga, thirty-seven views. Make a random how I got bit, did I get banned from Facebook for a week. Ne like nearly six hundred views. That was me yeah. throwing my pen in anger. Dude, I know. Believe me, I know. Ah, uh, make really in-depth analysis videos and how to get good at card games. No views. Make stupid deck profiles and box opening videos, my channel explodes. YouTube, like the current state of YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. Before yeah. it was nut shots and AMVs, now it's come down to exposing other YouTubers and box openings. Don't forget yeah. about don't forget about putting hundreds of layers of cum on your face to get yeah. millions of views. <laughs> oh no! No, please not that. That that actually happened. <laughs> Wow. It, it wasn't actual cum, it was just a lube called spunk that looks like cum, but oh god. Like, this bitch yeah. is ratchet as fuck, I'm not even linking that shit in the description. Please don't. Ugh. Well, this uh, was fun, thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah, no, no problem. Not a problem. No problem, no problem. Yeah, well, this is, the Scar this is the Scar Kid signing off. This is the Nerdy Knight signing off. This is Speed Robo. I'll see you later. And right. we'll see you next time.